that's oh, now enough information for us to be able to decide how to answer a few questions. So I'm going to do one question like this, and then I'll do an exam question. And then afterwards, we're basically going to spend the rest of the lesson just looking at some exam questions. I'm just going to stop because I'm getting really frustrated. So I'll just stop and wait until everyone's actually ready. OK, for a particular type of flower bulb, I should say flower bulb, 55% will produce yellow flowers. A random sample of 80 bulbs is planted. Calculate the actual probability that there are exactly 50. This should have said, and I've realized there's a typing error here, they should have said the probability that there are exactly 50 yellow flowers. OK? So in order to calculate that probability, there's a couple of, well, we can decide what we're going to do here. We should see that this is, to begin with, a binomial distribution question. We have a fixed probability, a fixed number of trials. They're independent from each other. And I can never remember the last one. There's only two outcomes. Two outcomes of yellow flower or not a yellow flower. So we could begin by saying, if x is the number of yellow flowers, then we think that x would be binomially distributed with 80 being planted and a probability of 0.55 of becoming a flower. Okay. The first thing it wants us to do is to calculate the actual probability that they're exactly 50. So what's the probability that x is equal to 50? Well, you would use your calculator. Um, have I got my camera ready to go? Bless you. So you could go to your distribution. Why am I doing this completely wrong? It's number two, of course. And we could go binomial. This one is actually going to be a probability distribution. And we've got that there are 80 trials. The probability is 0 0.55. And I'm interested, what's the probability of it being? How many did it say? 50? So you've got 0 0.0365. So that's there being exactly 50. Does that feel like a sensible probability that it would be exactly 50? Yeah, because yeah, like, there could easily be 51 or 49, so like exactly 50. Now, part B has said, use a normal approximation. Now, in the exam, it's probably going to say, by using a suitable approximation. A suitable approximation is the only one that you know how to do, which is the normal one, OK? So they're never going to tell you to do this. They're going to ask you to use a suitable approximation. And that tells you, I'm going to do the binomial, um, the binomial to normal thing. Yeah. So the distribution, if it's the one that I think you're talking about, it would be like a uniform distribution. That's if all the probabilities are the same. But this one is going to say use a, a, an, a, um, a suitable approximation to change it from a binomial to a normal distribution. So it says use a normal approximation to find an estimate that there are exactly 50 flowers. And we're going to try and see like, how close they are by doing a normal versus doing a binomial. So we've said that x is binomially distributed like this. So y would be normally distributed. Remember that it's np and then np 1 minus p. So we know that the number of um, flowers that become yellow would be normally distributed. Now np is going to be that times that, which is how much? 44. 44. And then you do 44 multiplied by 0 0.45, 19.8. And now we want to find out you're tempted to say the probability that y is equal to 50, but that is wrong. We have to find out the probability that y is between 49.5 and 50.5. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to use 44 as the mean and the square root of 19.8 as the standard deviation. So I shall go here. Normal distribution, which is the cumulative distribution. I can't even remember. The standard deviation was 19, the square root of 19.8, because remember that was the variance. And the value of mu was 44. And we wanted it to be between 49.5 and 50.5. Okay. And you get 0 0.03618. 
0.03618. So look, they're really, really close to each other, which tells you that the normal distribution is a suitable approximation that you could use here. It was a suitable approximation because the probability was close to 0 0.5 and the number of trials, 80, was large. They'll always tell you, when can you use it? If the probability is close to 0 0.5, and if the number of trials is large. It's a bit like, when can you use a binomial and we've got those four things? When can you use the, the approximation? When you've got the two things of 0.5 and lots of trials. Then it just wants us to find out the percentage error of the normal approximation for 50 flowers. So the percentage error is equal to the difference between them, which is 0 0.03618 minus 0 0.0365. Five. That one I seem to do some extra decimal points, so I probably should have done it just to four decimal places as well. But it doesn't matter, I've done it now. Divided by, which one do you divide by? First one. The first one, the actual one, not the big one, the, the true one. You always divide by the true one. It doesn't matter which way around, because you'll, you'll either get that it's, if it's below, it will give you a negative answer, which tells you that it's an, under, um, an underestimated one. Uh, the error is a percentage below. And you divide it by the original, which is 0. Uh, 0 0.0365, and then you multiply that by 100. So you've got 0 0.03618 minus 0 0.0365 divided by 0 0.0365 times it by 100. So you get that it's negative 0 0.876, blah, 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 which is minus 0.88%. The negative tells us that our normal distribution has underestimated the true probability, okay? So the percentage error is 0.88% below the true value. How do you know that the binomial is true? Because it is. <laughs> because this one is an approximation. This is truly what we would expect it to be, okay? The reason we do a normal um, approximation is because, like I was talking about at the beginning, it would cost a lot of money if you were doing big businesses and stuff and using this. So it's not something that you actually, you could just use your calculator. We're never going to do it with like a million trials, but that's just what it's here for, okay? So I'm going to do another question, and then we're going to just do practice pretty much for the rest of the lesson on this one. Yep? So would it, because um, I tried um, 0 0.362, and it gave 82%. Yep, so 0.82%. You, so what Decimal places should be just four decimal places is probably good. It's it, they're going to have in the in the mark scheme as long as it's as long as it's a range of values that it will be okay. Yeah. It's because if you use the full long one, you're going to get an even more accurate version of it as well. Yeah, so they'll give you a range of different ones that comes up here. Okay, so I wouldn't worry too much as long as you're not doing like one or two decimal places. Everything's fine. Okay. So let's try this one that we've got here. Okay, this one says that a discrete random variable x is distributed binomially with a number of trials n and a probability of p. First thing it says to us is to write down the value of p that will give the most accurate estimate when approximating the binomial distribution by a normal distribution. So the value of p, what's the best value of p? 0 0.5. And then part b says give a reason to support your value. Why did 0 0.5 give us the best value? Good, because, because when the probability is equal to 0 0.5, its binomial distribution is symmetrical, like the normal distribution. So we're looking for things that are symmetrical. If they asked you to say what value of n would be suitable, you would have to say a large value of n. 100, so what would that, 50. How, what the, reason that be? the reason for that is because it would create, um, it would like be the smoothest kind of distribution. It would create a smoother distribution. But I don't really think they'd ask you that, but it could. It creates the kind of smoothness of the top of it, OK? So here we go, we're actually going to do a question now. We know that x, they've just told us that there are 200 trials and the probability is 0.48. So x is binomially distributed 
with 200 trials at a probability of 0.48 and they want us to work out the probability that x is greater than 90 or equal to 90 and less than 105. So I'm going to change this to a normal distribution by working out first of all NP which is those two things multiplied together which is 96 and then you multiply by the remaining part of this which is 0.52 which gives you 49.92 so that tells me that me the mean is 96 and the standard deviation is the square root of 49.92 but I can just put that in my calculator in a second and all we need to be careful of now is thinking to ourselves what are the numbers going to be for the continuity correction? So if it's got to be greater than or equal to 90, what do you think the lower end should be? 89.5, good. And less than 105? No, 104.5. Because if it was 105.5, you would have been including 105. 104.5 stops you before you get to 105. It actually stops you at the top end of 104. Now that we've got to this statement that we've got here, you've got the mean is 96, the standard deviation is root 49.92, your lower boundary and your upper boundary. It just becomes a case of being able to type it into your calculator. So for me, switching back over here, we've got that the lower boundary was 89.5. The upper boundary was, I can't even remember, I've got a fish, a fish brain. 104.5. The standard deviation was the square root of 49.92 and the mean was 96, right? And so we get 0 0.7067. 0 0.7067. Okay? Sir? Yes? You know for the uh, 49.92, that's so. I know that it comes from the thing above, so why does it add up? Oh, so this thing here that we calculated is NP multiplied by 1 minus P. And NP was 96. So I just did that times that to get NP. And then I multiplied it by 1 minus P. And in this case, 1 minus P is 0.52. Because we can tell in our head, if it's 0.48, the next one is going to be 0.52. I tend to just do that in my head because I think they're quite easy to calculate rather than trying to memorize a formula. So we're going to do some questions from exercise 3F. By the way, if you ever do any of these questions and you look at your answer and you're like, it's close enough, it's close <laughs> enough, it's probably because you haven't done the continuity correction. OK, so there were a few questions where I forgot to do the continuity correction. And I was like, oh, well, they got 0 0.7067, but I got 0 0.7213. It's close. I must have just typed something in the calculator wrong. No, the mistake is I didn't do the continuity correction. So you have to make sure that you do the continuity correction that you've got here. Yes, this is what I mean here. This bit is the continuity correction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you'd get method marks and then you'd lose some accuracy marks at the end. You'd probably lose one mark for doing this continuity correction wrong and then one mark for the final answer being wrong as a result of that, okay? So we're going to do a few questions from exercise 3F and then we're going to have a look at some of these questions as well. But I'm going to just put the mark schemes up and ready so that if you do watch this back in the future, you've got them ready to go where you can pause. I'm just going to pick them in a moment. 